top four. You got your number one seed, male, who's number four on the leaderboard versus old rich. That's going to be our feature match because the other one, I'm so bad versus apple chips is a rematch of round five. So I'm going to take a second because there's a lot to cover here. First off, I'm so bad versus apple chips rematch of round five. We saw that close one. I'm so bad took that one 2-0, but it was pretty close between those two players. Male versus Old Rich is the one that we're going to watch. Old Rich on that sweet Huru deck. Okay. Other thing to point out, all players are in the top 10. You've got one versus three, four versus eight. You've got four players in the top eight players. So basically half of the top eight (laughs) players on the rankings made it to the top four tonight. So pretty crazy from that standpoint. Also, I want to show you a little slide here while we're checking out this top eight. Your projected wild cards, the people in the wild card hunt, are Apple Chips, Male, and in fifth place was Old Rich. So three players who are in the top five of the wild card race are in the top four tonight. And I'm so bad, who's the fourth, has already won a trophy. So one of these players, no matter what happens here tonight, is going to basically open up a virtual slot because. If I'm so bad wins, it opens up a fifth wild card slot. If Apple Chips, Male, or Old Rich win, they're three of the top five people in the wild card hunt right now. So, regardless of what happens, is really going to shake up the wild card race for the Invitational. So, there's a lot on the line here for the Invitational. So, for for those of you who, for those players right outside, like you know, RNG, Ash, Acer, John K. Kez, Alex Fierro, pretty important top four here tonight. Yeah, so, you know, definitely always have me commentating these because I love these matches where there are stuff on the line and there's stuff that both people in the matches and people that are not in the matches but are still affected by the results, like, it matters. And I love watching and commentating meaningful matches. So, yeah, I like this uh, cool. I, I like this time slot in the, in the T&E cycle. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, you don't always get to have these... Sort of everything on the line, all everything matters, but it's pretty exciting when it happens. All right, well, our semifinal is ready. So let's get down. Let's head down to our first semifinal. We've got Old Rich versus TBC's Mail. All righty, here we go. Welcome to the semifinals, folks. Mail was on the play, but Old Rich hit the ground first with a Dara Lee into Dovid. So pretty nice one-two punch there. My, my real question is, do we get to say it's old rich against a young male? I mean, <laughs> well, male's one of the youngest. It, it is true, right? Is, I think male's yeah. one of the one of the youngins, and, and and one of the most gifted. Like, despite like age or however you view that sort of thing, like male's like a really good competitor. I've worked with male on like the Justice League, a team that we formed for like one event, and like I ended up playing male's deck because I thought it was like the most tuned and really well designed. So. Yeah. Um, Age definitely yeah. isn't everything. I, I've been teaching my talking to my kids about this. It's funny when you're when you have toddlers and young ones and they attribute height to age. And it's like, uh, for some reason, in little kids brains, it's like a one for one relationship. And they see somebody that's like six, four. And they're like, wow, that person must be really old. And you're like, well, that's not that's not really how it works. But it is. Maybe that's old rich. I've never seen them in person. Who knows? <laughs> All right, Banish going to take care of the Dovid, leave some trash behind. That's a pair of two ones for Mail, but they're stunned, so it's going to be a couple turns before those hit. But yeah, I mean, that's a good timely play. That is, those those two ones are going to be unstunned in a relevant amount of time and took care of the 4-4 before it could do too much damage. So nice play by Mail there. And then the Sinister Rumors is going to take care of the Dara Lee plus a Javon. So three cards in a row that were pretty impactful there for Mail. Yeah, I've said it before, I'll say it again, like, Mail's deck is all good cards. Like, there are some subtle synergies, like Javon plus, like, Molder Muck or, like, the Speed Grafter Market and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, everything's an answer or a good card. So it's like, every time you're two-spelling and doing something super efficient like that, it's, like, really good for Mail in, like, the turn cycle. So Mail even has a choice next turn of, like, oh, I can play this Mandeville, or I can just, like... Javon draw a card, but after drawing Sandstorm Titan, you're probably just going to keep on shoving things down. Like, Old Rich doesn't have that much, like, efficient removal. It's really just the transform cards. We haven't seen an Echo, so we know that there's no unstable form, so it's really just fluctuated reality. It's like, okay, like, 
what's the worst thing that can happen? What's the best thing, like, Old Rich can do on their turn? On five, they could play Evolving Ozeal. Okay, what do I do against that? Mm -hmm. Playing Sandstorm Titan makes a lot of sense to you, like, invalidate a lot of it, so... I really, like, love the thing that's going on here. <laughs> So for old rich, you yeah, just... fluctuate reality, and that's gonna yep. actually go. <laughs> this is pretty funny. That's actually gonna go against mail. Gonna target two of their units. Try to shrink them. Hits a yeti snow chucker, which is okay, but then hits a Dara Lee on the other side, and the trash that Dovid left behind are soldiers. <laughs> wow, the Q Spider Man meme with that Daru Lee. <laughs> it's like, oh wait, like that's probably my... one of the worst one drops you can fluctuate reality into. <laughs> Might actually be the worst, but okay. and worst meaning like best. You know what we mean. Not not worst, 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 best, worst. Interesting. So it could be possible sense. that Mail didn't catch on to the synergy that you outlined there, um, or maybe just has a different plan for their two ones over time. Um, so the follow for Mail might just be okay. So you get to actually eat the. Jada and have like a 5 2. Oh, nice. Kind of yeah, fun. the Jada, you don't shrink any attack because it loses its attack. Nice little synergy. Second copy, Genitor Dovid the second for Old Rich. I'm still kind of mad that they don't change the name here on the card. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's just too easy. It's a digital card game. You can it should it. it should update. I mean, I'm I'm sure I'm gonna shout out Storybook Raw later, but I'll tell you what. They actually change the names of the cards from double E to triple E when you get three of them. I don't see why we can't have Janitor Dovid the second. I, I also want their faces to be like slightly different or maybe like a slightly different pose every time you do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's like a pretty good draw. Yeah. Well, D'Angelo Might's pretty good draw. I remember back in the days when that card first, people first started playing it and there was a question over whether it was too expensive and or situational. No, it's good. I, I think we're at the point now where we can just say, no, that card's good. It's just a very good card. <laughs> I mean, would you really play with that card? D'Angelo might. <laughs> Alright, so here you just have, like, tons of leftovers in your hand, which is pretty sweet from, like, the Iron Priestess. Shout out my, my preview card. Ooh. I'll never forget it. It's the first time nice. I've ever previewed anything. So... Yeah, so you got some extra material to work with there if you want to use some chess terminology, and then you can just convert it into like this 8 But speaking of material, if Mail just like trades a bunch with their, once again, just good stuff deck, then like it just becomes very good for them due yeah. to like being able to fuel up with D'Angelo Might. Yeah, the, the deck with D'Angelo Might turns out doesn't mind if you just trade one for one. <laughs> we do get the Urska here, Urska the Bear. <laughs> eight eight reckless. Ooh, another Kussel Brigade here. I actually didn't realize that that card was a soldier. That's pretty sweet. That is that is very steep. The bear is not. The bear is just a bear. It doesn't get soldier bear. It doesn't have the doesn't get the Yorick Burnson treatment here. Unfortunately. Uh. That's a Golden Compass reference for all of you. His Dark uh, Materials. Come on, get educated, I, I, folks. I read the book. I think. That, that <laughs> was the book, right? It was a book? It was a good book. So. Really good book. Bad movie. Yeah, yeah. But good HBO series. If anyone hasn't watched the new HBO miniseries, very good. Mulder Muck just... follow up by mail. We're just here tonight with all the shoutouts. Avatar the Last Airbender, like Kickstarter, <laughs> this. That's why people watch TNE, &E, I'm just telling you. Exactly. They come for our it's, hot takes and it, references. It's the one size fits all. Like you'll <laughs> learn about anything. Like I'll talk about Pokemon for hours. Like it's fine. We are oh, here so for we the, got the combo here. references for the people. So so we can make another 8-8 eight eight and get like we can discard this privilege and then get back a, a justice. Yeah, it's uh, kinda nice. Vigil. Nice little synergy there. Now, if there's one thing Moldermux do well, I mean, Moldermux do a lot of things well, but if there's one thing Moldermux do well, it is chumping 8 eights. They can do that for a while. Well, it's not an 8 8 for long, right? right it's like exactly. slowly withering. <laughs> it's, it, it's like trudging through all the slime. I had uh, one of my favorite draft events ever was when I had a Moldermuck, and I had no business winning this game. I was getting completely blown out 
but my opponent didn't have like ways to push through damage. So I just had these Molder Mox and then I like made a copy of it and I just basically chump blocked forever and I ended up decking my opponent because I realized that I could just basically block infinitely <laughs> or pseudo infinitely oh, wow. with these Molder Mox and they just drew a bunch of cards and I was like, all right, I'm just going to block you seven times with Molder Mox or whatever it is and win the game through card draw. <laughs> So, so you had some sort of like pump effect or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I could oh, like pump it up cool. and just get extras. And yeah, I think I jump blocked seven times, seven turns in a row or something in one off turns. It's time for more eight eights or oh boy, like just more, just more bears. Consoles. You know what mail is thinking over there on the other side of this? Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. I mean, I could go off on those, too, because Battlestar Galactica is an amazing show, but no, I, I was thinking Males just thinks that this is unbearable. Oh, uh, wow. It's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm a dad. I'm allowed to tell jokes like that. I'm not a dad. I tell jokes <laughs> like that. But, but you know, I, I have a dad, so that's six years old. <laughs> you have a dad, therefore you're qualified. Yeah. Speed, speed grabs are going to come in with charge, and that's going to deal the final points of damage to mail we may have forgotten that we're actually covering a top four match here but don't worry mail is going to take that first game over old rich i think that game was pretty close to over as soon as mail stabilized and then hit a d'angelo might well yeah also like the the trash from the david was like pretty relevant just being able to swing in with those yeah, two ones was. like made the life total low enough so you know while david was. i'm a little disappointed that we didn't see the darley trigger i gotta say yeah, you know, I'm I'm sure Mail's the type of person that, you know, from talking to them and stuff, like, they do want to improve, they do want to get better. I'm sure they watch all their matches from the TNE coverage, and, you know, they'll go back and see how they could get into their habit loops to, like, include that sort of line into their stuff. Well, if you're somebody that wants to go back and watch your TNE matches, you should check out the Tuesday Night Eternal YouTube channel because all of the VODs after every single event are online on YouTube and you can go watch. They're all cut to the timestamps of the actual matches. You don't have to listen to us between rounds spew nonsense. So you can just focus on the action. They're all cut up and I usually get up there pretty quickly. Usually like the next day they're up and ready to go. So pretty, I've got a nice little system going here where i can generate those fairly quickly so if you want to rewatch them you can watch them on twitch but you can also just go to the youtube channel and check those out yeah i'll, I'll be honest i normally when i do miss coverage uh like watch the the vod but then today i want to look at like a specific thing it was like really easy to navigate and i just like clicked on videos and they just like took me exactly where i expected them to so i could definitely attest to the fact that they're very well done on the youtube page there you go Old Rich on the play. Going to start off with a turn one Daru Lee. A little bit of a slower hand here, though. You got Privileges of Rank is a little bit of a worse two-drop than Dovid when you're trying to be the aggro deck in the matchup. I mean, yeah, Privilege of Rank know, is a very big card do, in a like... lot of situations, but aggro deck turn two, playing it for full value isn't really exactly what you're trying to do. <laughs> Yeah, but like, you know, there, there's a cost to putting these things in your deck. Like, so often it's plus one card or whatever yeah. from like discarding it. So, like, it's cool to see that it has a cost. Like, if they wanted to, if they wanted to make privilege like really different, they could have just made a cost 10 or something and then like make it a discard only card. But, you know, it's it's nice that they want it to be played with like often enough. Agreed. So they, totally. They allow you to do this. All right, fluctuate reality. I mean, yeah, what else is Old Rich going to do? They're not going to attack their 2-1 into that 1-1. One, one. The classic zero <laughs> How about drop. flipping it into a 1-1 one, one that can't block? I like that play. I mean... I guess there's not many zeros in the game, right? So you got, what, like, helpful doorbot and, like, a 1-1 one, one that can't block? So it's probably pretty safe. Yep. I don't know if there's a... I don't know if you can downgrade that into something that can block a 2-1, but... There's a... That's like the perfect draw for Old Rich. So you have one unit that makes another one where if it doesn't get answered, you get to release it up. Yeah. But instead, we are not releasing it up. Yet. Mail's got those answers now. Although Mail, importantly, stuck at three power and stuck at one shadow influence. So two copies of Moldermuck in hand, but Moldermuck requires two of those little purple pips in the corner and Mail only has one. So those cards are not being cast. And then no D'Angelo Might and no Sandstorm Titan yet. So Mail can cast this Banish, but that's it. It's all Mail can do until they draw some power. Look at the Shadow Realm. 
How about Avara's favor to get you your second shadow influence and take out your unit? Not sure there's a better draw for mail there. <laughs> All right, Dovid gonna pluck off a fluctuate reality from the top of the deck. All right, right, unstable so. form, but we're going to go with another Fluctuate Reality. So we're going to hit two units. We're going to hit the Sandstorm Titan and turn it into a Crack Shot Fugitive. And then Jeez. Skyward Seer, 1-3 Spark. Well, I guess that's not really relevant. So just a 1-3 here. Yeah, we're really starting to get into the territory with some of these random cards. <laughs> I've never seen them before, and I do actually need them read to me. Yeah, that's all right. I remember playing this 2-2 in draft. Not a bad 2-2. I mean, maybe these days. I don't remember. Draft has probably changed. But back in the day, I'd be happy with that 2-2. Uh, but how about another Sandstorm Titan? That's not good. Uh, this is not looking pretty for Old Rich. This feels like a little bit of a bad matchup for Old Rich. Like, we've uh, we've talked about before that... It's always tough when somebody does something similar to you, but a little bit bigger. And it's like, mm -hmm. if you're the aggro deck that's kind of shifting into mid range, you don't want to face up against the low to the ground mid range deck. Like they're just doing everything you're doing, but a little bit bigger and a little bit better. It's better. It seems like Old Rich has better matchups against the slower decks, the control decks. Um, but I don't know. Mail can just sort of answer everything that Old Rich is doing just as effectively. So part of the problem is also that like Old Rich is playing some powerful cards, but like it's kind of also a synergy deck. Whereas like Mail's cards are all like so good and have the ability to like break up the potential synergies that are gonna happen. So I do agree with you that it's like a pretty bad matchup for Old Rich. Of course, yeah, their draws have like of course that much. drawing five cards that might just spell the end for Old Rich. I mean, D'Angelo might say that. Um, but yeah, just like so much material and male's hand so you know even if things were to trade off and you know that's not going to happen with like molder mox like making copies and other d'angelo's might it's like old rich kind of doesn't doesn't have like the catch-up mechanisms in play it's just like you need to assemble some sort of board go wide like make sure that you have more threats and they have answers and here just kind of falling behind needing to play these privilege in the ranks that you like mentioned and just how it goes sometimes Old Rich going to use Steyr's eyes to see if there's anything that can save them here, but I don't think so. Is that the one when it dies and makes a giant thing? I think I know that one. Like some bait yeah, card. The entomb, yeah. yeah, it's bait, entomb, 1-1, one, one, play a 7-7 seven, seven flying overwhelm. Yeah. So Mail's just seeing, like, what's the best, like, most efficient way to end this game quickly. And you, um, you know that there's not really any fast spells in Old Rich's deck, so you can pretty much do whatever you want on your turn, and then you can just shove. Yeah. Yeah, the problem, I mean, is kind of what we already mentioned, but the problem is Old Rich doesn't have a lot of catch-up mechanisms in this deck. It's not like, once you're behind to what Mail's doing, behind a D'Angelo Might and behind on board, like, a Dovid off the top, a Darley, like, that's not going to get you out of the problem. Yeah, but th this gives Old Rich some extra points, like, might move them up in the standings with Mail in the finals. If they win, as you mentioned, like, a spot pseudo opens up, I'm so bad I can still win, which literally opens up a spot. Right. So, not a bad finish with a super cool deck. So, you know, getting that extra three 